I want to talk about these bioluminescence plants. Now, that technology is going to be available, you know, in, you know, horizontally when you look to the 2030s. Wow. So let's say that uh, you're in Saudi Arabia and you're building Neom you know, and you're MBS and you have this. You had mentioned some early detection systems that these plants could be used Yeah, for. Sentinel plants. You could modify what sounded like, like a thorn bush. And make yeah. a make a security wall with thorns that are. You invest in Colossal. You're like, oh yeah, yeah. I'm part of that whole Willy Mammoth thing and that whole Direwolf thing. And you're like, holy shit, that's awesome. You know, like, tell me more. It's like, oh, I can't tell you anything. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I want to talk about these bioluminescence plants first. That <laughs> we had. You showed me some pictures at breakfast. It it. it wow. I mean, it looks like it looks like. It looks like something out of a movie and the light that these things are putting off. I mean, it looks like, it looks, if we, we can't show these pictures yet. No. No. It looks like they're under a black light and they're just glowing in these magnificent neon colors. And what, so let's get into that r real, not, not real quick. Let's get into that and then we'll get into your life story. Where did this come about from? So, you know, for many years, I uh, always wanted to do a synthetic biology company because I, I, when I uh, was in college, you know, I didn't know if I wanted to be a doctor or a mathematician. So I took a ton of biology classes and chemistry classes. And a lot of my friends who went deeper into that, they started, there was because they were right at the beginning of the CRISPR era and the whole gene therapies and all these things. So they were doing all the time genetic engineering and they kept saying, well, there's all these cool things that will be possible in 10 or 20 years. And like, like what? And they're like, well, you know, you could take human skin cells and merge them with octopus DNA. And then, you know, octopus can actually change its color. So you can make a human skin cell be able to change its color and camouflage itself, kind of like the predator or something like that. It's like, wow, that's cool. Or you can take luciferase in this case and put it into any plant you want. And you can make a plant glow in the dark. And so for more than two decades, you know, I was, I was aware that these capabilities would be evident at some point. It just... Really, I was looking for a partnership that would make sense. And so it was the serendipity. I met Ben Lamb, and Ben uh, is a, he's a genius. He's a great guy, a wonderful guy. Uh, and uh, he's kind of like me, where he likes doing a little bit of everything. We both like the alien stuff and this thing. And he started all these weird startups, and he's made quite a bit of money from them. And uh, he was uh, just getting started with a startup called Colossal, which I invested in. And Colossal is kind of famous for bringing back the dire wolf. And mm -hmm. they're working on the woolly mammoth right now. And it's an amazing company. So Ben and I were talking about, is there, was there a way that we could do something with Colossal in the cryptocurrency space? And this was back in 2021. And as like a side conversation, I mentioned uh, to him, hey, it'd be really cool if we could do glow-in-the-dark plants and, you know, let's, let's think this out. And he's like, I want to do that too. I, I, and uh, George Church, the guy that started Colossal with him, like was an expert in this area. He, he wrote all the books on synthetic biology, like Regenesis was one book and over a thousand papers and these things. He's like a gigabrain out of Harvard. He had all this technology to basically do this. I, and, and it was one of those, like, did we just become best friends you know, type, type of thing? So we're like, we got to start a company. It's like, yeah, shit, we got to start a company. So we ended up starting a company, and we're still running mostly in silo. And they hate it when I talk about this stuff. But every now and then, I'll be like, hey, there's there's some cool stuff coming. Um, and really what we've been working on is is more than just this concept of bioluminescent plants, which is super cool and interesting. But also we've been working on this idea of using synthetic biology to engineer plants to be better adapted for our goals in the environment that they're put in. So let's say that uh, you're in Saudi Arabia and you're building Neom and you're MBS and you have this grand vision of like this trillion dollar massive mega city in the middle of damn nowhere that, and you want to terraform the entire world. Well, there's only so much you can do with steel and concrete and glass. At some point, you have to use agriculture, and you, what you'd like to do is reclaim the desert and turn it into a different biome, because who wants to be in a desert? Mm -hmm. You want to be somewhere interesting. That's why we're out here in Tennessee, and this morning we had breakfast. That place was gorgeous. It was all this beautiful, lush greenery you know, everywhere you look. Well, I'd love to see that if I was MBS. And so what if you had a company that understood so well how to modify the ambient environment that it could conceive of plants to do such a thing. Or what if your goal is carbon reduction? You can make plants that sequester enormous amounts of carbon. Or what if your goal is environmental reclamation? Let's say you have a shooting range. You know, what's your number one problem? You're going to accumulate a lot of lead over time, right? 
And so what if you had plants that seeped it right out of the soil so it doesn't get into the water and, uh, and sequesters inside the plant? You can do these types of things. So bioluminescence is a really magical thing because it's one of those, like, you can see it. Mm-hmm. It's, it's not a hypothetical, like, if I make plants that sequester carbon, oh, that's cool, they sequester carbon. I can't see it. You know, it's not really, it doesn't really appear to be anything meaningful. But the, here, it's like, it's just magic. It's something that never existed before. And you can imagine the art of the possible. You know, glowing cities, glowing golf courses, organic lighting, all these magical, amazing things. So, and the other thing is that once you've mastered that as a platform, then all those other use cases become tractable and useful and easy. Yeah, because you now know how to pretty much do anything you want with the organism, you know? And what's cool is the bioluminescence can also be a guide to tell you whether those genes have been taken or not, because you can cross-link them and you can say, well, if it glows this color, it has this property. If it glows this color, it has this property or these types of things. So there's a, there's a method to the madness, and uh, it gets people instantly interested. And they, and they always say, oh, that, that's AI or, you know, that's a fantasy or it's under a black light or something. And then they physically see it and they say, wow, this is incredible. And so at some point soon, you know, we'll go out of silent mode and actually have a big showing of these types of things to get people very excited about it. But every now and then when I meet an interesting person, you know, I kind of share it because... Uh, people say, wow, the world is moving in you know, kind of a new place. And then they always ask for something. They're like, can you make this plant glow? Or can you do this color? Or wouldn't it be cool if we could decorate this way or do this thing? And then we say, oh, that's a good idea. And you kind of take it and you say, well, maybe we should work on that or something like that. You know, I, I don't know how far you want to dive into this, so I don't want to push, but you, you had mentioned some early detection systems that these plants could be used Yeah, for. sentinel plants. And so imagine you're a coal miner um, and you're in West Virginia or Pennsylvania or something like that. Gillette is like one of the coal capitals of the world, but we have these big open pit mines, which are a lot safer. But let's say you're underground, you're a coal miner, what's your number one problem? You're worried about methane, you know, because it naturally leaches off the walls and you don't smell it. Most people, when they think of natural gas, they, oh, it smells terrible. Well, that doesn't actually, it's odorless. It smells terrible because after they process it, they put a chemical in it so you can detect it and you can smell it. So if you're a miner in a mine and natural gas is building up, it's a silent killer. It explodes and, and so it's terrible. So you have to always detectors and that's why they had the canary and coal mine, this type of thing. So imagine a plant, a cave moss or something, and it doesn't glow unless there's methane and when it does, it glows red. Man. It's called a sentinel plant, right? And you can use this for military applications, for industrial applications, for environmental applications, you know, these types of things. Uh, and uh, that's the art of the possible. And that's what gets people very excited about this technology. Because then you say, okay, the plant is now an information transmitter about something in my environment. And it does it naturally and organically, and it's just there. Uh, and once you have that capability, then what that does for you is it puts you in a position where you are able to kind of ask your the people you're working with, what do you want? You know, what would improve safety? What would improve the experience? You know, what would improve the ambiance of where we're at? And then you can design the plants, you can design this biology around that desire. Uh, so that's what gets me most excited about it. And what's cool is it's, it's the only time ever where like Hollywood is interested and restaurants are interested and casinos are interested and the Air Force is interested. You know, it's like there's this huge spectrum of people. Uh-huh. It's a magical company. Uh, and I love those magical companies. They just make people want to be part of it. They want to be invested in it. They, they brag to their friends, like, I am in this coolest company in the whole world. And Colossal is much the same way. Any Ben Lamb company is this way. This is why he's a genius. It's like, you invest in Colossal, you're like, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm part of that whole Willy Mammoth thing and that whole Dire Wolf thing. You're like, holy shit, that's awesome. You know, like, tell me more. It's like, oh, I can't tell you anything. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you had mentioned... We were talking about security and a little bit of prepping and all yeah. that kind of stuff as well. And you mentioned that you could modify what sounded like like a thorn bush and make yeah. a make a security wall with thorns that are. Yeah, you know, like I, I have a construction company and we have about 200 people in it. We do dirt work and concrete work. And I go every year to World of Concrete and all these things. And if you own a construction company, at some point you're building walls, you know, whether they be concrete walls or wood walls, whatever. And uh, landscaping is a big part of a security element. And so they're, they're, all the time, you can plant things like the Japanese barberry. It's a perfect bush for security. It can grow about six to eight feet high, which is exactly about how high you want it. And they got these really 
sharp, nasty thorns, and they're about that wide. So if you create a hedge wall and then back it with like a concrete wall or you know a wood fence or something, you've already created something that's very hard for somebody to work their way through. Well, why don't people do this? It's horrendously expensive. It takes a real long time to grow one. You have to water it and maintain it and all these things. Well, when you get into business synthetic biology, you can say, okay, well, I want something with the properties of a crown of thorn or a Japanese barberry or whatever the plant is, but I want it to grow like really fast. And then you can just 3D print some lattice structure, you put it in, and then you just grow out an entire wall. Well, if it's bioluminescent, it also glows at night too. So you have your organic lighting and now you have a denial and all these things. And then you'd also t tune it for the environment. So you'd like say, well, I don't want the deer to eat it, so make it bad for them, but it's fine for humans or something like that. So you can really get granular with your design requirements. And what's cool is then you can even blend it with your logo or branding. So you could be like, okay, well, I want it to match the colors of the brand of my corporation or organization, you know, because I, I use black and red for input output. So those are our colors. So it'd be really cool if we can do like black flowers or red flowers or things like that. And it's all there. And that technology is going to be available, you know, in, you know, horizontally when you look to the 2030s, especially as AI gets deeper into bioinformatics, you basically have like a CAD for organisms. You can sit down and kind of type in all your requirements and it tells you exactly what you need to do step by step and you go and design it for the client. You can do that for bespoke large scale commercial landscaping. Um, and, and it's cool because then you start blending the aesthetic with the functional you get a lot of wonderful properties that really help you out, but then you also get these aesthetic properties and it, it creates a uniqueness about what you have. So you don't live in this world of malls and Walmarts and you know ugly landscaping. Mm -hmm. It's more like European cities where every place you go has a very unique architectural fingerprint and it's very distinct and memorable. Man, that is fascinating. How long, how long, is, how long have you guys been working on that? Oh, for about two years now. You know, that's and, it. Yeah, that's it. And the first step was just building the science team, and uh, and you got to understand, it's like it's like cryptocurrencies. You know, we've been working on it for a while, but the cryptography has been around since the '70s, like as an academic discipline. But it's been around for hundreds of years as like an endeavor that people do. And Caesar encoded things. It's called the Caesar cipher. It's a substitution cipher. So the, these ideas are there. It's just you have to wait a little bit for the science to mature to a point where you can commercialize the science. So quantum computing, for example, there's all these different incredibly difficult things that have to happen, but once they come together, then you can build a quantum computer. No matter where you're watching Sean Ryan show from, if you get anything out of this, please like, comment, subscribe, and most importantly, share this everywhere you possibly can. And if you're feeling extra generous, Please leave us a review on Apple and Spotify podcasts.